Welcome to Level 1 Walkthrough. I am your host, Tony. And I wanted to take a moment and thank everybody for your patience on uh, our delay in podcasts that we've normally been wanting to do every week um, concerning what's been going on in the world with uh, COVID-19, which is uh, coronavirus. It's made a it's pretty much it's it's stopped or halted a lot of things that uh that a lot of people are um doing on a daily on their daily life so um seeing as that i live in seattle for myself i've kind of had to be a little bit more aware of what's going on currently so uh this podcast and the ones going on from from the future from then from from now from till then is just going to be with myself. Um, my friend Imed and I, we started the actual podcast together. Um, however, things changed, so we just wanted to kind of do our separate things as well. So he's still doing uh, Twitch as well, which is uh, part of his actual... He can be able to do streaming, so if you guys want to um, check him out there, uh, you can be able to see that he's on Twitch as well. So... Um, but, you know, going back to, you know, what's going on, uh, what I want to do is this podcast now, the structure is going to be a little different. It's going to be with myself, um, but I'm also going to be trying to be able to get uh, people to uh, guess that I've actually wanted to be able to do within here in Seattle. Uh, but now that what's been going on with the coronavirus or the COVID-19, it's uh, made uh, everything a little bit more difficult uh, to be able to do that. So, uh, but I am still trying to make a point to get these things going and actually uh, try to be able to do these things um, structurally the way that I want to. It's just right now, considering that we took a little bit of a break, it's like almost three weeks to, since our last podcast, uh, just wanted to, you know, just let you guys know that we are, that we or I am still going to be doing that. So from from here on out, it's just going to be myself, but then I'll also be able to have other people as well. And I want to get... Uh, people that are working in the uh, video gaming industry to actually kind of talk about, you know, what's going on with their, if they're doing any projects or, you know, things that inspire them on like what games they like to be able to play or, you know, what started their whole career process and where they landed in right now currently. So it's going to be a little bit of a different format. So I hope you guys, you know, brace with our, this, this change. I know it seems a little sudden, but you know, things happen and, you know, you just have to kind of change along with it um, just like this world is changing gotta change along with it so I wanted to actually go uh, and talk about uh, what's been going on with uh, with the last of us uh, not the actual game but it seems like Neil Druckmann has announced that he's going to be partnering up with HBO and they're gonna be making a TV series out of this so this idea of their the last of us video game from the their first and then also their their part two that's going to be coming out um, in the next couple months. Uh, it's going to be really exciting because it sh seems to be that they're going to be doing this around um, March fifth of a uh, March fifth is when they actually announced it. So it's really kind of it's it seems like they're kind of moving forward and it, uh, it's going to be really exciting on what they can do with that because what they've created with this world kind of like how uh, the Walking Dead really did set up the tone for what's going to happen with these characters and in the graphic novels of the walking dead you really you know get invested with the characters um the tv show is just that extension of that where you actually get to have that live action um you know feeling of like these characters like they feel like they're really alive instead of you know on paper so i'm really excited about this i i really think that that what they're going to be doing um uh, i think this one in particular with other video game adaptations i think this one can be able to maybe break through and actually be very successful because most video game adaptations are not very successful uh if you go back to like prince of persia um if you go to you know there's super mario brothers which is not a very good movie but for its time uh but there's quite a there's not that many video games and then Assassin's Creed not too long ago with uh, Ubisoft, which tried to do that as well, um, which is not surprising. They, they they try to market everything, so not really surprised that they made a movie. Um, but, you know, the way that this, this, this one works, it looks like with Neil Druckmann being a part of it and a lot of uh, Naughty Dog 
uh, along with it. And the person that's going to be potentially directing it is the one that created uh, Chernobyl, which is a, a TV series on HBO. So if uh, you haven't watched Chernobyl, it's it's a very, very highly drama drama filled uh show that has a lot of great great dialogue uh, a lot of cool scenes with the uh, characters they they really take their time to you know really have that those those moments and it's you feel like it's actually it's it's leading into something it's not just it doesn't feel like someone's just acting it feels like it's very natural so uh with the last of us coming out uh part two is going to be coming out with the game this is going to be really exciting to see what's going to be happening with this uh tv show so um i don't think that they've actually announced when it's going to be potentially be be uh filming but it's going to be coming up pretty soon so hopefully uh, any news or anything changes from theirs, anything that happens, uh, I'll keep you guys posted as well. So um, I'm really excited to see, obviously. I mean, The Last of Us is kind of one of the main reasons why uh, this podcast actually became what it is and what I wanted to actually uh, create because just because of the actual stories of the characters, they felt really real. They felt grounded. Uh, they weren't powerful. They They felt like real people. They... Uh, you couldn't take on a bunch of enemies at once. You had to be very methodical. You had to be very aware of your surroundings, and you had to pick and choose when you when you were gonna fight or if you're gonna sneak away. Which a lot of times you can't, but it really kind of forces you to, you know, have to think on the fly. Especially when you had to craft items um, out from your backpack, it really makes a sense of like how to keep you engaged into the world where it doesn't pause the actual menu when you're going through your items. So. All those little things is is why uh, that game has been so, you know, it's been so close to my heart just because of what they've done. And now there's a TV show. It's it's going to be really exciting to see what that's going to, what, what, what's going to be with that. So, you know, from there, I kind of wanted to, you know, really just talk about like how things have been going on here in the world. Just, you know, based on like my experience here living in Seattle, I'm not sure where, uh, where all of you are, oh, I have a sense of an idea of like most people that are um, that are listening to our podcast. Uh, but you know, if you live in the if you live in the areas where it's you know you have a little bit more cases of uh, the actual um, COVID nineteen that are you know actually not only people that are getting uh, infected with it, but they're also dying. Um, you know, just try to stay safe. You know, this it's very it's very scary just because. It's something that you can't see. It's a. Uh, it's something that you have to like, kind of be very aware of around being around people, uh, being around crowded areas. You know, safety precautions, things like that. So, it's 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 very stressful. And you know, for myself, um, I've had to actually be able to you know look beyond what's happening and kind of look at myself and say, okay, what what am I gonna do? You know, if things start to go, if things start to get you know out of control, because. As of right now, currently on uh, May fifteenth, there is uh, forty-two people that have died in Seattle alone. So it's been going up pretty quickly, and um, luckily, you know, my my girlfriend is uh, a registered nurse, so she's been keeping me up to date on a lot of the things that's been going on. So it's, you know, I'm I'm glad I'm thankful that she's taking the time and actually giving me more information because without that, I don't really know what I'd be doing. But at least it's a way for me to be able to prepare, you know, just as, just in case. I mean, never, never too, never too early to be able to prepare for what you're doing. So, you know, something like this, it's just you know, you kind of have to look at, you look at what's going on, and kind of just look at yourself. And you know, right now everybody's really scared, which no doubtably you should. Um, you should, you should be aware. You should be. I'm not saying you have to overly prepare, but you know, in our the school school system alone in Seattle, just to give you an, uh, an idea, if you don't know, uh, Seattle, all of the school districts have all closed. Uh, there's malls have been shutting down. Uh, downtown area is basically done with, and it's it's pretty much like a very very. It's kind of like a ghost town. It's it's kind of eerie when you when you see the downtown Seattle proper. It's seems very very unusual uh traffic isn't as bad getting getting into downtown in the mornings but man it's 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 kind of weird so you know it's just uh 
just because of Seattle just being the the kind of the the one leading in the United States about you know the amount of people that are getting infected, but also not infected, but people actually dying, is a uh, is really scary, and it's 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 real here. You know, there's going to the grocery store, going to get anything, you you can feel the actual awareness that everybody has. It's it's a little it's a little it's a little unsettling. You know, you try you try not to let that uh, focus in on your daily life because you still have to work as well. Um, but even me personally, with my my actual work, uh, there's locations that are shutting down as well. So it's it's getting to where there might be something that's gonna change. You know, my my daily routine as far as you know going to work as well with my regular job. So. And you know a lot of uh, a lot of people that are working in tech, you know, in Seattle, have all like the most of them are telecommuting. Amazon did that a while ago. Google did that, uh, and even Microsoft they they made a point early, like uh, I believe about maybe about a month ago, that they were wanting to uh, pull their employees and have them just work work from home if they could. So a lot of people don't have that luxury. You know, a lot of people have to go to work and actually be around people, or you know, you're around other other employees. So. It's kind of um, the thing that's in everyone's back of their mind um, because it's so there and you can't help but to pay attention to what's going on. Um, you know, if, if you're in a state that doesn't have uh, any cases or anything like that that are, you know, not as high, then, um, you know, you're, you're probably not as aware um, or maybe you just it's not a focal point for yourself, which is understandable. Uh, but here, like even in like New York, it's it's getting, you know, just just seeing what happened in uh, in Italy. It's just it's that's just unbelievable. The amount of people that right now currently that have that have got it, but also that have died. It's over it's over a thousand over like I believe fifteen hundred last I checked a couple of days ago. But, you know, it's it's. I don't want to, I don't want this to seem like it's a kind of just a, a downer or anything like that but you know uh, part of this is you know being able to you know talk and be able to share my thoughts and feelings and you know with something like this you really have to um, you have to just kind of just look and see like what's best for you um, what you can be able to do to protect your you know your loved ones your family your friends uh, just be more aware you know it just it really it really just goes off of what you're comfortable with. And, you know, here for myself, being in Seattle, it's, or in Washington itself, you have to, everyone's aware, everybody, just because of what's been going on. And, and since I know somebody that's in the medical field, it's, uh, you do, you, you, it is very alarming. So, you know, with that, I just, you know, kind of wanted to take a moment and actually, you know, just be safe with everybody, you know, try to, uh, Put yourself in the best position. Make the try to make the best decision decisions when you're you're either out and about. You know you still want to live your life. You still want to go out and have fun. But you know if you don't have to worry about it in certain areas that you're in, you know that's you know I, I that's great. Um, but if you are in one of the the states that are being affected by it, I mean it's all over the world. So you know just try to try to be safe. Try to. Try to wear gloves if you can. Um, masks itself, you know, you can be able to wear. Um, it's not necessarily something that you need to wear all the time. Uh, but just think about, like, if you're around a lot of people and if you're going to be touching a lot of things and if you're kind of going to have to walk through people, then maybe just have the actual mask on because it just – anyone that coughs, anyone that sneezes, sneezes now – everybody looks at looks at them like i've even like I, i've sneezed a couple times in front of people and everyone freaks out it's no joke like people just look at you with that thousand yard stare it's you know it's it's very very unsettling and you know that's kind of why you know you just want to have a little something for yourself just to you know just to protect yourself you know have something because you know you don't know that's one of the things that's the scary thing about this is that you just don't know uh where it is you just know that it's it's people are getting getting it and are not recovering and also there's no there's no cure there's no um vaccine for it yet so it, that even makes it even more alarming since it started all the way in january where the first case is in uh in wuhan so in china so you know with that i just i'll leave you guys with that i just you know i want to i want to leave this on at least on a positive note but i 
do want I did want to mention this because you know it's not only did uh, the podcast has changed where it's you know going to be segmented um, by me, uh, but also too what's going on here. It's just you know you want to you want to just be able to just be open and you want to just be as transparent as possible. So you know I like I said things change and you just want to you want to you know everybody everyone has what they want to do and it's just you know everyone everyone has to just adapt to what what other people want so it's like you know just try to do what what you want to do and what what's what brings you what brings you joy because right now it's like you kind of have to look at that because it's like some people are staying home some people are panicking and getting a lot of like food uh, necessities things like that which you know you can always still do uh it's it's i'm not saying one or the other uh it's just you know you have to you have to just kind of just like think about those things and and that's not normal you know it's not normal the way that our our daily lives are you know especially when just for locations for myself is uh for my job is you know that they're that they're shutting down that's where it's kind of like you have you you're i'm kind of seeing it myself so but with that you know i wanted to also uh go into and actually talk about actual games that i've been uh been playing um, I finally got a uh, Metro Exodus and uh, I've been playing that uh, for I think I'm about maybe like f- five hours in and you know it's it kind of it gives me a lot of uh, Fallout 4 um, memories of uh, of when I was walking through the wasteland in, uh, in, in that game just because the way that it's set the way that the world is uh, Metro Exodus is your 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 main hub is a is a train so you're on on the surface you're not you're no longer in the in the metro metro stations so you're not underground not as much and in this one you're actually there's parts where you can actually breathe the the actual surface so not to give any any spoilers away but you know you can be able to you still have to wear masks in certain areas you still have to micromanage your 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 ammo uh you're also your your battery, your your electricity. You have a little generator generator that you have to pump up. So the currency of your of your money uh, used to be your ammo, which I haven't come across yet. It seems like you just have to pick up ammo while you're out and about, while you have enemies, or there's other people, or there's you know people that you can be able to t- loot their stuff on that have that have died on the on the surface. So I don't. It doesn't seem like there's any currency with the bullets like they did with uh, Metro Last Light. So I really like that concept because it made you have to think about the amount of ammunition that you wanted to take um, when you did have to go out, um, not only on the surface, but when you had to actually go out of the, the, the metro station because uh, you had to upgrade your stuff. So it's like whatever you had was your currency and what you can upgrade. So I like those things. It seems like they've taken that away um, in this one, which I've, I haven't come across yet. But if it is still in there, then that's that's cool. But seems like the the train itself is your main your main hub it'll get to a certain point and then you have to venture out uh the game is an open world it's uh still linear it still gives you paths on where you can be able to take on things um it gives you objectives where you can see points of interest that you can go to and they give you you know they give you information you're basically going out and scouting these areas and taking out you know any of these people that are out uh that are bandits um or if you're just getting away from the mutated creatures, so it's it's a wild game. It's uh the the mechanics are a little a little janky where they're they're real tight. Um, you don't really have a sense of like navigation of where enemies are unless they're actually you can hear them behind you or anything like that. So there's no like awareness that way. Uh, but I mean they have the same thing. You can open up your your map and um you can flip it over. Uh, you can be able to see your objectives, and you can still use your a lighter to be able to burn uh, cobwebs when you're in certain areas and like tunnels or anything like that. So, it's it's still got the elements of there in the in the in the from the previous game in uh, Last Light, but it's it's a little different now. It seems to be a little bit more open, and you can you can the cool thing is you can customize your weapons. Um, when you get into a workstation, so any like these workstation benches that you can find in some safe houses, uh, you could basically be able to you could craft your items right then and there, and it's cool because it's kind of got the uh, what is it a Crisis Two element where your character, if you're going to change the things on the fly, he would pull his gun up, and you can actually go to the the 
the barrel, the magazine, like the camera will switch from that position of the gun. So it kind of shows you the actual gun in real time and you can actually change the things there. That's kind of what this game does where you can actually change those things on the fly. Um, there's also uh, armor that you can get. There's a lot of cool things that you can do. You can craft stuff as well. So um, it's a fun game. Um, it's just I'm not... I'm kind of surprised on like the story itself is kind of taking a backseat for myself. I'm not really that invested into it, um, but I'm five, five hours in, so I'm still playing the game. Uh, but uh, two days ago, I picked up uh, Neo 2, and man, I've been playing that game. I'm, I'm barely into it. I've been playing about maybe three hours at the most, and man, that game has immediately took me right back to the way that... Uh, uh, Bloodborne and uh, Demon Souls and Dark Souls, like how vicious this game is. This game does not hold any punches. Like in the very beginning, you they give you what what it is that you do, your mechanics. Um, it's very reminiscent towards uh, Bloodborne, the way that it's a little fast pace. Um, the one thing you really have to be aware of, and you have to f you have to find a way to to see it uh, while you're doing it in combat. So when you're doing combos. After you finish an actual combo that you do, there's a little indicator, the little thing that you can you can press to like kind of boost up your stamina from whatever you use in that combo, and it refills it. So like in Bloodborne, you it would force you to get close to the enemies because if you got hit, if you hit them again or you hit them after they hit you once and your energy depletes, then before your energy depletes all the way to where that damage would stop, then you can replenish some of your actual your health by that so it kind of encouraged you to stay close to the enemy uh so very similar towards that and it's man i mean even for the very beginning they they give you a, a a big boss to be able to fight and this this boss is no joke he's got this big like hammer like the big old thing he's like a like a kind of like a, a beast dragon kind of guy and he's got this big uh, mallet and it's it reminds me of the uh, the first uh, Colossus that you take down in uh, Shadow of the Colossus, the first Colossi, um, that's got that big mallet. It's like a big hammer, but it's like a big, it's kind of like a, it looked like a statue that he like ripped off like a building, and that's what he's using. So, um, or it's an actual building that he just took off or whatever. I don't know. But um, yeah, I, I played it, and uh, it's it, it's really frustrating. It's It's got me to the point of just like where you die constantly like i died like at least no joke like maybe 30 40 times in the first boss because the game doesn't really uh it, it teaches you enough but when if you haven't played these type of games where you have to dodge you also have to be aware of their 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 radius of when the the enemy is attacking you have to be aware of all that um i found myself having a little trouble um seeing all the things that are happening right then and there because there's a lot of information that's being um sent out to you while you're actually hitting taking damage like or giving ammo, uh, damage to the enemies um because it gives you an indicator of like how much damage your swing has done so it, it seems like it's kind of a little bit of an overload but then also you have the enemy that's attacking as well so it can be a little hard to see and you have to adjust to it so if uh if you're a fan of these type of games from uh from soft so software um then it would be right up your alley, but just be prepared that it's it's definitely going to test you. Um, and you, you, it's got that same thing where you're kind of walking around and, you know, enemies will ambush you. Um, there's crates, there's things that you can find. And the same thing, if you die, then you're, you have this uh, guardian, this spiritual guardian that's like kind of like your your power. So whenever you you your energy gets up to a certain point, you can you you can unleash this power. It's like a demon type of power. This is like a a guardian. It's like a spirit, and that can be used to like take down more. It you know sends out more um, more energy to your uh, more damage to your enemy. So you have to use it sparingly because you can't use it all the time. It has to it has to boost all the way back up. So it has to recharge every time you use it, and you only have it for a certain amount of time. So with that it's like you have to be a little bit more aware and you have to use it when you can so it's a uh, it's definitely a very very tough game i uh i do want to continue playing it uh i just i got frustrated i was streaming it um not too long ago before i um started recording this and i think i oh man i think i died i don't even know how many times but i'll, I'll leave the 
the the link down below so you guys can be able to see where I, where, I, where I was playing. Um, doesn't have the first part of it um, when I was playing the first boss, but it's a continuation of it, and it kind of just kind of shows like how when you respawn your um, the enemies, like when you go to your hub and you can replenish your yourself and you can you know do little things if you need to. Um, and then from there, the enemies all respawn. And even when you die, you have to go back to where you have to pick up your, your basically your guardian, your, your spirit guardian, um, in order to get all your stuff back. So, um, unfortunately it happened once where I died in between of trying to get to there after I died once. So I lost all my stuff. So I'm still getting a feel for that. Um, so it's, it's, it's really, really tough and it's, it's hard. It's hard to gauge the enemies just on like how much damage they're going to, um, dish out like regular humans are not all that difficult but if you have a bunch of them that come at you then you have to like take one at a time so it's it's you have to be very mindful of your your actual what weapon you have but then you can change stands which is cool you can have a, a, a low a medium and a high attack and then you have a stamina that you have to be aware of so it's it's a lot of little micromanaging but if you if like i said if you've played games like this that are you know, combat heavy and, uh, and, uh, parry and melee real heavy, you know, just like, uh, Demon Souls, uh, Dark Souls and, uh, Bloodborne, then you know exactly what you're getting into. Uh, I played a little of, uh, Nori, t Nori, uh, not Nori, it's, a uh, Neo. I'm always thinking Nori. It's, a uh, Neo, the first one. I played a little bit of it, but I didn't finish it. Uh, but I heard a lot of good things about the second one. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to pick it up. Just try it. And yeah, I really do like it. It's it's given me a lot of these, uh, harkens me back to all these memories that I had when I was so frustrated playing Bloodborne more recently. Uh, so it's it's a fun game. So I'm I'm gonna be streaming that. Uh, I'm doing it through uh through YouTube at uh at the main website, which is or the main YouTube channel, which is uh Level One Tester, which is uh Level O N E Tester, and um that's where all the uh, the streams are gonna go. I'm I'm kind of experimenting with Twitch. Uh, to see if I can be able to put some of that stuff on there, but it's actually pretty, it's, it's hard to, to be able to do that as well. So it's like, I want to kind of focus on, on YouTube just because the channel is going to be posted on there too. So all the people that have, um, watched this stuff before on the YouTube channel, um, originally, then you can see all the stuff there too. So I'm going to start processing and putting all that stuff in there too, as well. So, um, but yeah, the, the game is, is, is pretty, pretty demanding, pretty, pretty damn hard. And you have to you have to keep you have to be very repetitive and the enemies unfortunately every t every time you die they respawn back so you have to learn on little things on how to be able to take down the enemies and you have a lot of enemies while in between the actual level and then you'll have like a main boss or like maybe like a mini boss that you have to fight uh it's kind of like where in god of war when you get to a certain point where the exits would close or the entrances would all close and you have to fight all the enemies in waves. And then you'd have a main boss that would come out or something like that. It's kind of like that. Um, because you, you'll you notice when you actually have one of these mini bosses. Because they'll have like a like a fog that will like be just in the distance and you see it. And once you see that, then that's when you register. You know that, okay, this is a mini boss that you have to fight. But if you, if you die, you have to go all the way back from wherever you respawned back originally and you have to go through those enemies all over again so it's it's it can be frustrating but you know if you like games like this it do doesn't hold your hand forces you to um to pay attention to what you're doing and you know not make mistakes then then yeah it's a, it's a perfect game for that so but with that you know i just wanted to uh this this podcast is going to be a little little short and sweet uh just wanted to let you guys know that you know it's I, I like to thank you for, you know, for sticking with us. And, um, you know, even though things have changed, um, I hope you guys still listen to us still listen to us and still listen to, you know, myself. Um, but I will, but I will, I'll, I'm going to have, uh, other people, um, hopefully soon. Um, but considering what's going on right now, it's going to be a little hard to be able to, to get in touch with people that, um, that I may, may have to be able to meet for the first time. So, you know, just, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to play it as I, as I go, but a lot of it's going to be on, uh, the games that I'm, that I'm talking about. I'm going to be doing it on the, the YouTube channel as well. So description descriptions will be all in the, in the bottom. So, you know, you could be able to listen in and, um, now, you know, this is, uh, this is gonna be primarily what, uh, what you'll be hearing. So, um, 
This time, it's just going to be these kind of these little segments. I'm going to be doing some retooling on things that I want to do. So um, got a new intro that new intro song that a friend of mine made. And then I have an also an outro too. So I hope you guys really enjoy it. I put a lot of time into it and um, really had a, a, a direct focus on what I wanted. So uh, now it's kind of molding into like the something that's just for just for just myself for like what I want to do. So Hope you guys still listen. Hope you guys still, you know, subscribe, you know, still send comments. Um, I'm also on uh, Twitter as well. So it's same thing, level one tester. And you can be able to find me directly on there. I'm going to, I'm doing a, uh, a little bit more of a better job of letting everybody know that, uh, that I am going live, especially on YouTube and stuff like that. So if I'm doing any kind of streams or anything like that, I'll definitely make a point to be a little bit more um, aware on like doing it through Twitter. So if you do, you know, send a follow, you know, great to be able to, to reach out to you guys. And then, or you can just send out, send out comments or you can be able to, uh, just subscribe and just tell a friend so that you could, so a friend can tell a friend, you know, it's just, just like to continue what we're doing. And, you know, I, I have a great time being able to, to talk to, to everybody about like, you know, what, what I'm passionate about and what I, what I like, um, especially when it pertains to video games. Um, just because it's, it's really exciting right now. Like you, you have that, uh neo 2 that's that's really challenging really combat heavy base game and then you have metro uh exodus that's kind of more of a like a wasteland kind of like a fallout 4 type of game um but it it is it is very very similar but it's all these are like cool games that are coming out and then you got uh the what is it that uh that one game that's uh doom um uh legion is legion or legacy or I think I, I think I got the name wrong, but, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, I'm just kind of, I'm kind of more, I'm kind of more, I'm, I'm really excited for what's going to be happening, uh, in the next couple of months. So, uh, but I'll keep everyone posted, you know, you know, being here, being in, uh, in Washington, it can, um, change a little thing, change things here and there. So I'll try to try to keep everyone updated and posted. And if there's any changes or anything like that, um, I'll definitely try to make a point to, to let you let everybody know. So, so at that, at that, I'll just leave it, leave it as is and I'd like to thank you guys for, for listening and ladies and, you know, send a comment, you know, download it, share it, send it out. And, you know, I hope you guys like it, but you know, like, like I said before, just try to just be safe. You know, if, if, the, if things are going, things are going out and things are going bad, you know, you just, you know, try to focus on your, your loved ones and try to focus on you know, things that, that make you happy. So Let's uh let's all just try to pull through this all together and you know just hopefully this this will just be another uh, one thing that we just we, we can forget about. So in the meantime, I'll see you all next week. And once again, this is Level One Walkthrough with your host Tony, and I'll see you guys next week. <laughs>